Hi, I'm Caitlin from Electronic Specifier and I'm joined today by Phil Goff from Flex Power Modules. Phil, thanks for being here. You're welcome, thanks for coming over. Could you provide a quick introduction to who you are and who the company is? Sure, um, yeah, my name is Phil Goff. I'm located in the UK and I'm Business Development Manager for Flex Power Modules. Um, Flex Power Modules is an acquisition uh, of Ericsson Power Modules about eight years ago, seven and a half years ago. Um, and it was Flex's first foray basically into products. Um, most people know Flex as Flextronics and know them as an EMS, a manufacturing company. Um, but uh, just recently, very much we're focusing on products and uh, DC DC converters from Flex Power Modules are the first of the product line um, that the Flex have introduced. Great, thank you. So, why don't we start with your IT and power infrastructure portfolio? Can you walk us through it? Yeah, sure. Um, essentially, we make uh, DC to DC converters that power the chips that uh, the infrastructure runs off, be it telecom, data centers, um, AI, you know, everybody's using generative AI these days. That needs a lot of power. There's a lot of processing behind that. Um, so, we power the chips, um, but as Flex, we actually go from grid to chip. So um, there's been a number of acquisitions, again, that Flex has made over the recent years that um, enable us to provide, um, especially uh, for the data center environment, a whole array of power solutions. So roughly we calculate it's around 80% of the data center power requirements we can actually capture now within Flex. I think it's a really fortuitous time with how AI adoption is growing Absolutely. and growing. Yeah. Yeah, it's massive, and it's it's really uh, uh, you know going gangbusters in terms of numbers, um, the power levels as well. So you know each of the GPUs that uh, is behind the generative AI, they're increasing year on year in terms of power requirements. Um, so whereas uh, they may have been 400 watts a few years or a couple of years ago, um, they then went up to 700 watts. They're now beyond a kilowatt. So that's a huge amount of power that they need fed locally to them, and that's where we come in basically. So following on from that, how are you supporting hyperscalers, cloud service providers, and also data center operators um, from grid to chip? Well, we're a small part of a bigger picture, basically. And Flex, over the last few years, has acquired a lot of companies that can provide solutions for um, power, heat, and scale, um, as well as the sort of grid to chip discussion. It's, it's, it's really about power and how you can uh, dissipate the heat, how you can remove the heat. Um, so through different acquisitions like Anod Mardix, Crown Technical Systems, um, we can provide power solutions from the front end of the data center. So you know megawatts of power basically at that side and uh, low voltage and medium voltage uh, switch gear. Um, then through to the rack type power, so we have um, rack level power and shelf level power from our colleagues at uh, Flex Custom Power. Um, and then we also have uh, a more recent acquisition of Jetcool which is basically cold plate cooling systems, uh, direct-to-chip liquid cooling. Um, and that's really required for the GPUs, for example, that we power. So they need a lot of cooling. They're now you know, dissipating up to, uh, well, they're, 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 yeah, they're dissipating up to 1,200 watts or so. Um, our module itself then has to power that solution. So that also has to be cooled. So direct-to-chip liquid cooling is a big, big issue for data center manufacturers now, hence the, the acquisition of Jetcool is a really, really good uh, acquisition for Flex. Thank you for that, Phil. Given that we're here at Embedded World, I'm sure there are some new products that you'd love to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the two products that we are um, talking about at Embedded World this year include the uh, BMR316. Um, and the BMR316 basically is a one kilowatt rated product. Uh, it's a 23.4 millimeter by 17.8 millimeter part, uh, just 7.65 millimeters in height. Um, and this delivers uh, up to one kilowatt of continuous power uh, and up to 2.8 kilowatts of peak power. So it's incredible in terms of the size of this. You can see physically how small it is. Um, all the visitors coming to the show and seeing the stand, they're, they're amazed when they see this particular product. Um, it is, of course, designed for uh, liquid cooling. So like I mentioned earlier, with the uh, GPUs needing a kilowatt of power, this is providing that power, but it also dissipates, even though it's 98% efficient, it still dissipates 20 watts or so in this package size. So that needs to be taken away through uh, liquid cooling. Uh, and this basically is a uh, unregulated, non-isolated, fixed ratio DC to DC converter. So this would take in the 48 volts or the 54 volts um, from the supply uh, ACDC, and it would convert that to a 12 volt output typically. Um, and that would then be used to feed voltage regulator modules and point of load converter modules downstream. So that's one product that we're introducing um, at the show, the BMR316. 
Um, the other is the BMR 352, and you can see it's much bigger in terms of the package size, um, but this basically now is a two kilowatt rated, um, isolated, um, sorry, a non-isolated DC-DC converter. Um, this time it's fully regulated. So this product is non-regulated, this product is regulated. So whatever the input voltage is doing from you know, 40 to 60 volts, for example, this will be a flat 12 volt output. Um, and as I say, this is delivering up to two kilowatts of continuous power and up to uh, three kilowatts of peak power. Useful for the data center marketplaces, um, AI, generative AI, etc., cetera, um, uh, machine learning, anything that's uh, you know, needing that high power density. And when we talk about power density, some of the numbers on this product are just crazy. So um, this is capable of delivering 15 kilowatts per cubic inch um, or 900 watts per cubic centimeter. So it's really incredible, the power density of these products. Mm -hmm. And it's um, great, to, great to see it here on the stand. So for those who are watching, how can they learn more about Flex Power Modules and your products? If you're at the show, of course, please come along to the stand. Um, we are here all week and we'd love to speak to you face to face. Um, if you are not at the show and you'd like to learn more about us, then the website is the best place to go. Um, our website is flexpowermodules.com um, and on there there's a host of different things that you can do, not least of which is a, a product selection guide so you can actually go in and put in your uh, parameters and it will recommend products to you. So we also have uh, uh, useful tools for engineers as well called Flex Power Designer for example, um, which is a simulation tool where you can um, put in your power tree. So a designer can actually put in what they need in terms of the, the voltages, the currents, the different rails, etc. They can use then our modules, select from the different modules, the tool will help you select. And then you can do things like configuration of the modules, um, simulation of load transients. Um, we also then combine that with thermal modeling. So on our website, again, there are thermal models and there are mechanical models as well. So more and more customers need that for their um, simulation and development work. That's great. Well, thank you, Phil, for joining me and for showing a little bit more about the company. Thank you. Thanks for coming.